Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another stream of Python. This is Python coding for kids from 9 to 12 years old. But of course, if you're older than 12, no one's going to know that you're learning Python. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in your 30s or 40s. You can still join this class because this is a free stream today, okay? This is a free stream. If you're joining us from YouTube or Facebook, welcome. Uh, this is going to be uh, a fun lesson today. Before we get started, if this is the first time you are joining our stream, make sure you go into python.org and install the correct version of Python, okay? So go into python.org by going into your web browser and then go to python.org over here. And then scroll, scroll down to downloads, okay? So you download and then you go download Python 3.8.2 for Windows, or if you're using Mac or you're using any other platform, scroll down to the correct version of Python and then click there. Okay. After you've downloaded, make sure you uh, click on it to run. Run the installer, and then after you install, it should uh, give you a new program called Idle. Okay, so when you are uh, when you're ready to run Idle, then I'll show you exactly how to do it. Okay. After you've installed Python, you go into uh, your, your uh, operating system and then you go open idle. So here I have idle on my shortcuts. Run idle. And then this will be your Python shell. And usually what we do is we put it on the side of our screen like this. And then you go file, new file, to do a new Python file, get ready for the lesson. When we're talking about inputs, why do we need inputs? Well, remember when we did our, um, our calculator exercise, like back in way, way, way back in week one, okay? Uh, what we did was we needed to um, do all of our, our inputs in the code, right? But if I pass the, the program on to mum or dad, uh, then they're not able to use it very well because they don't know how to read Python, right? You have to teach them, you gotta show them like, well, you gotta change the numbers for X and Y over here. Uh, but inputs make it easier, okay? Inputs make it a bit more user-friendly. That is a special word that us programmers use to make sure that we understand that users are not like programmers, users are, are people like, like grandma or grandpa, people who don't know as much programming as you do. And they, they need some help. They need people to prompt them how to use your program. Calculator. So I'm going to give it to you as a challenge, and then I'm going to go through slowly to, to do it um, uh, in case you are stuck. Okay, so challenge. How many days worth of toilet paper do you have? Uh, ask user to input how many rolls of toilet paper you have in the house. Ask user how many squares of toilet paper are in each roll. And then finally, Ask user how often they go to the toilet each day. Okay, so using these three these three inputs, we want to create a calculator where we prompt them. We ask them these three questions, and then they are going to uh, you're going to help them calculate how many days worth of toilet paper they have left. Okay. Um, Colonel, uh, you have a question. Yes. Yes. So, but then, would you also ask them how many squares of toilet paper they use? Ah, that is a good question. So we are going to assume. <laughs> oh, we're going. We're going to assume that we use, uh, let's say 15 squares, okay? 15 squares of toilet paper each time they need to do a number two, okay? That's just going to be, 
like an average, okay? And I'm not going to to specify exactly how many, but you can add it as a as another prompt. But I'm not going to uh, go into exactly uh, how uh, asking that user that exact question. Marcus, you have a question. Uh, how do we factor in our siblings? How do you factor in your siblings? Excellent question. I'm going to do the basic version, and then you are going to, as your homework, do the version that asks you how many people are in your household. Is that okay? All right. So, uh, and also for, for your homework question, you can also make it so that maybe one person of the household uses a bit more toilet paper, the other person uses a bit less. I'm not going to specify exactly how your household is going to work on the toilet paper crisis, but this is the basic approach, okay? So, uh, you should probably have started uh, coding by now, but in case you haven't, I'm going to start coding, okay? So, roles. It's going to be a function, uh, 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 a variable. We go equals uh, input. How many rolls of toilet paper do you have at home? Oops. How many rolls of toilet paper do you have at home? Okay. And then second one is going to be squares equals. Uh, so this is the squares in a toilet roll. So in, in the toilet roll package, it would say how many ply it is and how many um, sheets it has. So if it has uh, more than one ply, make sure you multiply the sheets by the ply, okay? So if it's two ply and you have 150 sheets, then it's 150 by multiplied by two, okay? So anyway, it's input. How many squares for each? Roll. And then we say uh, daily toilet runs equals input. How many times do you need to do number two each day? Okay. And then the final answer is how uh, is we're going to call days supply equals and then i'm going to leave that blank because uh I, I want to see if anybody can calculate it first and then we go print you have uh plus and then str day supply day supply plus days Supply of toilet paper. Okay. So day supply is the final number that we need. So I'm just going to look if anybody is close or anybody wants to talk through how to calculate day supply. Raise your hand. Um, I'm pretty sure you calculate day supply by how many rolls of toilet paper you have yep multiplied by the squares yep and then um m multiplied with how often you do it mm -hmm. um and multiplied by 15 Multiply by toilet runs and then multiply by 15? Are you sure? Wait. Hang on for a second, Colonel. I'm just going to see if uh, uh, Aiden has, a, um, has another suggestion. So first of all, you have you take the number of toilet paper rolls. Yep. And you times that by the number of squares per roll, and mm -hmm. then you, uh, and then you um, divide that by the number of daily toilet runs, and then you uh, divide it. it. Actually, no, That's you good. Divide, sorry, sorry. Wait, no. Do we divide? You. Yeah, you do divide because. Mm -hmm. And and then, 
and then you divide by 15. Uh, you divide by 15? Actually, no, you time, you div yeah, you divide by 15. Divided by 15. You're very close. You're very close. Can't say 15? Uh, all right, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Okay, so it's the toilet rolls multiplied by the squares, but that needs to be in brackets, okay? Whoops. In brackets. And then divided by um, daily toilet runs multiplied by 15. Okay. But even that is still not right. We need to do one more thing, otherwise, it's going to spit an error out down here. Who wants to tell me? what that is. Uh, column? At the uh, end? Column. column where? At the end. Ah, uh, okay, so I had to close parentheses, but um, uh, that's not the exact thing I was uh, looking for. The, the thing is that day supply, what kind of format, I mean, what kind of type mm -hmm. is day supply? What is the object type of day supply, GC? Do you remember? Um, is it going to be a, a words or is it going to be a number? Number. It's going to be a number. What kind of number? Do you reckon it's going to be a nice round number? Ooh, no. no. And what if we know it's going to be some sort of decimal, what's the um, type that we need to give it? Uh, I forgot. Uh, it starts with F. Um, ah, the tip of my tongue. Um, <laughs> Alicia, do you, can you uh, uh, give it a shot? A floating point number. A floating point number. So the keyword is float, and then we go open brackets, uh, and then close brackets in front of all of that. And then it will print out, you have however many days supply, toilet paper. Right, and 15 is what our assumption is for uh, the, the, the number of toilet squares that you need in order to go to the bathroom, okay? So if we go file, we go save, uh, and then we go run, run module, we can, it asks us how many t rolls of toilet paper do you have at night? And I think I might have, I don't know. Uh, how many squares for each roll? So if I've got, like, it's whatever your ply is multiplied by how many sheets it has, okay? So you can go to your bathroom at, right now and have a look at the, the label and see how many, how many sheets it is and how many ply it is. So how many squares for each roll? Maybe, uh, I'm not sure, 300. How many times you need to do it to each other? I think one is nice and healthy. Ooh. Let's have a look. Uh, can't multiply to 94. So let's have a look at over here. Ninety-four rolls by squares. Ah, okay. So the issue is uh, they're all calculated strings. So here's here's the very important thing about inputs. It's when you type in an input, Python always thinks it is a string. It always thinks it's a string. So you must either implicitly or you can't implicitly, you have to explicitly um, typecast it as an integer or a floating point number okay? uh, for numbers. It's really important that anything you put into the input in the, in the shell, it will always think it is a string first, okay? And you have to, have to typecast it, okay? So let's go back here. So uh, when we say rolls, we have to say int rolls. And then for squares, it is also int squares. And then for daily toilet runs, we go int daily toilet runs. Let's see how we go now. How many toilet uh, rolls do you have at home? Six. 
301. You have 120 days of supply of toilet paper. Okay, so if you are um, uh, in a house that has more than one person, which you probably do, uh, uh, then uh, you'll have to ask also how many people are in your house. And uh, if you want to use more or less sheets uh, of, of toilet paper, then uh, you have to ask how many sheets of toilet paper do you use, okay? So that is our code for making this toilet paper supply calculator. You see how in the times we are, how, how with the times we are uh, to, to do our activities, okay? Oh, we got another question? Yes. What if like you already opened like, what, like a packet and then you've got like half of a roll? How do you know how much, like how many squares you've got in that one? Well, uh, in that case, we're going to have to approximate. So uh, maybe you can, instead of making um, an integer for your rolls, you can have uh, a floating point number for your, for your rolls. And then you can say, well, I've got like 16 and a half rolls left or something like that. <laughs> okay, so you don't have to have a full number uh, in order to do your calculation. Okay, and then you can use that to, to add some more vari variety to it. Okay. Has anybody got any questions now that we're 